Welcome to a thought-provoking journey through the maze of legal complexities. Today, we're delving into the nuanced differences between some of the most intriguing and often misunderstood legal concepts in the Philippines. We'll explore concubinage versus adultery, unraveling how the law differentiates between these two forms of relationship transgressions. Next, we'll demystify entrapment and instigation, clarifying these critical law enforcement strategies. Our discussion will also cover the delicate balance between defending a relative and self-defense, shedding light on the legal subtleties of protecting oneself and loved ones. Then, we'll distinguish between reclusion, perpetua, and life imprisonment. Two severe yet distinct legal sentences. Finally, we'll dissect pardon, amnesty, and parole, understanding how each uniquely alters a convict's path. Prepare to gain a deeper understanding and a new perspective on these fascinating legal distinctions. Let's begin this enlightening exploration into the world of law. Subscribe to Law Requisites PH for more legal information. Understanding Adultery versus Concubinage in the Philippines Subscribe now to stay informed about legal concepts in the Philippines. In the Philippines, adultery and concubinage are two distinct legal concepts that pertain to marital infidelity but they are applied differently based on gender and circumstance. Adultery is defined under Philippine law as a crime committed by a married woman and her male partner who is not her husband. This crime is committed when a married woman engages in sexual intercourse with a man who is not her husband. Imagine a scenario where Maria, a married woman, engages in a romantic relationship with Juan, a single man. If they have sexual relations, Maria and Juan can be charged with adultery. This is because Maria is violating the sanctity of her marriage. Concubinage, on the other hand, is committed by a married man. It involves either keeping a mistress in the family home, having sexual intercourse under scandalous circumstances with a woman who is not his wife, or cohabiting with her in any other place. Conversely, consider Pedro, a married man, who starts living with Ana, a woman who is not his wife, in a different residence. This action can lead Pedro to be charged with concubinage, as he is maintaining a sexual relationship outside his marriage in a manner that is publicly known, while both adultery and concubinage deal with marital infidelity. They are treated differently under Philippine law, with specific conditions and implications for each. Understanding these differences is crucial for a comprehensive grasp of marital laws in the Philippines. Don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content on legal concepts in the Philippines. Stay updated and informed. Entrapment versus instigation in the Philippines. Understanding the difference between entrapment and instigation is crucial in the context of Philippine law. These concepts, often confused, have distinct implications in legal scenarios. Entrapment refers to a law enforcement strategy where officers or agents induce a person to commit a crime they would otherwise have been unlikely to commit. However, in entrapment, the idea and intent to commit the crime originate from the person accused, and the law enforcement simply provides an opportunity to commit it, example of entrapment. A police officer, disguised as a drug dealer, offers to sell illegal drugs. The buyer, already intending to purchase drugs, approaches and makes the transaction. Here, the buyer's intent to buy drugs pre-existed the officer's offer. Instigation, on the other hand, involves law enforcement officers or agents inducing someone to commit a crime which they had no intention of committing. In this scenario, the officer is not just providing an opportunity but is actually planting the criminal intent in the mind of the accused, example of instigation. A police officer aggressively persuades a person with no criminal intent to transport illegal drugs, assuring them it's risk-free and offering financial incentives. The person, influenced by the officer's instigation, agrees to commit the crime, in the Philippine legal system, entrapment is considered a legitimate law enforcement technique, but instigation is not. Entrapment does not absolve the accused of their crime, as their criminal intent is inherent. However, instigation can be a defense, 
as the crime was the product of the law enforcement officer's idea. Subscribe to learn more about these and other vital legal concepts in the Philippines. Self-defense versus defensive relative in the Philippines. Understanding the legal concepts of self-defense and defensive relative in the Philippines is crucial for both legal professionals and ordinary citizens. Let's delve into these concepts, and don't forget to subscribe for more insights into Philippine legal concepts. Self-defense in Philippine law refers to the act of defending oneself against wrongful aggression. Its elements include, 1. Unlawful aggression. There must be an actual or imminent threat to one's life or limb, 2. Reasonable necessity. The means employed to prevent or repel the aggression must be reasonable, 3. Lack of sufficient provocation. The person defending must not have provoked the aggressor, example. Imagine a scenario where a person is attacked by an armed robber. If they retaliate to protect themselves, possibly disarming the attacker without using excessive force, it's considered self-defense. Defense of relative Concept and elements, defense of relative, on the other hand, involves protecting a family member from unlawful aggression. Its elements are, 1. Unlawful aggression. There must be an actual threat to the life or limb of the relative. 2. Reasonable necessity. The defense action taken should be commensurate with the threat level. 3. Defense of ascendant, descendant, or sibling. The relative in question must be a close family member. Example. If a person witnesses their sibling being assaulted and steps in to neutralize the threat without escalating the violence, it's considered defense of a relative. Both self-defense and defense of relative are essential legal defenses in the Philippines. They reflect the value placed on personal safety and family protection. Understanding these concepts helps in identifying legitimate defense actions in threatening situations. Remember to subscribe to stay updated with more legal concepts in the Philippines. Your knowledge and understanding of these Understanding pardon, parole, and amnesty in the Philippines. Subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions on legal concepts in the Philippines. Pardon, parole, and amnesty are three distinct legal concepts often confused due to their role in the criminal justice system. While they share similarities in providing relief to offenders, their nature, implications, and processes differ significantly. Pardon is an act of clemency granted by the President of the Philippines, absolving the individual from the legal consequences of their crime. It does not erase the conviction but removes its penalties, example. A businessman convicted of tax evasion receives a presidential pardon. Although his conviction remains on record, he is relieved from serving his prison sentence and other penalties associated with the conviction. Parole is a conditional release of a prisoner before the full prison term is served. It's granted based on good behavior and the belief that the individual can reintegrate into society, example. A person sentenced to 10 years for robbery demonstrates good behavior and reform while in prison. After serving six years, he is granted parole, allowing him to live in the community under specific conditions for the remainder of his sentence. Amnesty is a broader act, usually pertaining to a group of people. It is often political, absolving individuals from criminal liability for specific acts and often erasing their conviction, example. During a political upheaval, a group of soldiers stages a coup attempt. Later, the government decides to foster national reconciliation and stability. An amnesty is issued, absolving these soldiers of their crimes related to the coup. This act erases their convictions, allowing them to reintegrate into society without the burden of their past actions. Understanding the nuanced differences between pardon, parole, and amnesty is essential for a comprehensive grasp of legal processes in the Philippines. Each mechanism serves a unique role in balancing justice, rehabilitation, and societal interests. For more detailed explorations of legal concepts in the Philippines, don't forget to subscribe.
Stay informed and engaged with our content to deepen your understanding of the legal system. Understanding Reclusion Perpetua versus Life Imprisonment in the Philippines Reclusion Perpetua and Life Imprisonment are two distinct legal penalties in the Philippines, often misunderstood as being the same. Both entail long-term confinement, but they differ in duration, parole eligibility, and other legal implications. Subscribe now to learn more about these critical legal concepts and stay informed about the nuances of Philippine law. Reclusion Perpetua An insight, reclusion perpetua, under Philippine law, translates to imprisonment for 20 to 40 years. A person sentenced to reclusion perpetua is not eligible for parole until after serving the minimum period. For instance, a person convicted of serious crimes like murder might face this penalty. After 30 years, the sentence can be commuted, but the convict remains under certain legal disabilities and disqualifications. Life imprisonment A clear perspective, in contrast, life imprisonment does not have a definite duration and may potentially mean confinement for the convict's lifetime. However, unlike reclusion perpetua, it doesn't carry the accessory penalties like civil interdiction. For example, in drug trafficking cases, the offender might receive a life sentence, implying indefinite jail time without specific accessory penalties, while both penalties involve extended incarceration, reclusion perpetua is more rigid in terms of parole eligibility and accompanying legal disabilities. Life imprisonment, on the other hand, offers more ambiguity in terms of duration and lacks additional penalties. Subscribe to our channel for more insightful updates and deep dives into Philippine legal concepts. Stay informed and ahead in understanding the complexities of the law.